like just about to happen we're kind of about to go into the eye of the storm so I'm feeling weirdly calm and collected and together so and I think it's quite unique during fashion week to see a young designer like you to already create this kind of collaboration so can we tell me can, can you tell me a little bit about that first of course well I mean when we first started lover boy it was always in my mind an opportunity to showcase people who I was really inspired about you know, Loverboy's always been about community, so I really wanted to give, have an opportunity to give somebody else a space, and it felt really fitting. I, he's an incredibly, incredibly talented person. I mean, the benefit of it, of working with him in this context is that he's also just my best friend, and it's been such an amazing journey working with somebody who you're really close with. But let's go into Portal. So already the title, it's like this, um, you know, a little bit suspenseful thing, and then we just done a tour of the space and you took us around to see what's going to happen and it made me take this little trip down to literature and I felt like I was in the Divine Comedy with Dante entering Inferno in the dark with Virgil and then Virgil taking throughout you 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 called one space the quarantine and I call it the purgatory mm -hmm. and then you know eventually probably when we see your collection into paradise so I, Tell me a little bit about your vision about this incredible space you are taking us through. Well, I think w one of the first things that was a sort of catalyst for it was I was Googling folkloric events that were happening around the time that we had bought this space. And weirdly, today is the festival of Maybon. And it's this really interesting pagan festival that's to do with the equinox between dark and light. So this, the night is the same time as the day. And, you know, I've always been really interested in folklore and mainly Scottish folklore um, and, and how that links to sort of queer culture. Because I always think that kind of queer people are magic and I always find that there's like really nice associations with what we do as a, as a community and how that aligns with things like ritual. And so in my head, I just visually started to see this kind of black hole. And I've also just been watching like loads of programs about physics and space because I'm obsessed with space. I've got a tattoo of Jupiter on my chest. Like I just have always, always loved it. So I've been visually watching a lot of stuff about black holes as well. So I just think there's something really ominous about like a portal and this idea of it being something that could be literally like a sci-fi reference where it's like, okay, we're rendering this whole space in a very kind of sci-fi folkloric way. But what does that actually mean as a metaphor? From my side, like, you know, being an arbiter of something, is, is really, it's quite an important role, you know, whether I was, I've cho I've, I have chosen to do this career, but you know, it's also, I have a responsibility and I think that I'm really realizing now that fashion, you know, it's so easy for it to be this huge masturbation about, you know, your ego or whatever. But, so I think it's so important for whenever you're kind of putting so much work together is to always think about what that actually means and what that actually says to the world. The brief really was a story, right, of um, this kind of pagan, I guess, club, festival of like-minded people I guess uh, and for, for for me I guess there's a um, there's a nod to spirituality there's definitely a, a, a nod to youth and also a nod to alternative thinking um, so a lot of references came uh, from club culture, uh, anime, pagan festivals, horror movies, <laughs> comics, uh, music, generally everything I love. <laughs> the candle hairstyle. <laughs> which I was like, uh, Is that your favourite so far? <laughs> I don't know that. I've never seen that before. And I don't know how we ended up there, but we started melting candles on heads because we wanted hair to drip <laughs> and we were like Claire and myself we were like oh my god we just got to leave the candles in I'm in heaven when I look at that <laughs> I mean I think that's probably one of the not best things I've ever done you know and we got we got Devonte. I mean and he, he could be an Indian god here we have Satan luring everyone into the black hole 
Into purgatory. Into purgatory, yeah. Love Charles, love him, he's great. He's just got, he's just open, you know, and he's not afraid. Uh, and it's what I think fashion should be about, really. It should be about dreams. Um, with Charles, there always is a brief, but it's quite loose. Um, we he he actually worked with um, an artist um, George Allen that created a lot of the face masks for the uh, for the audience downstairs. So we did a lot of airbrushing in the style of him. And then for her, we have based our look on illustrations by a Japanese artist called Yoshitaka Amano. Um, Matthew Joseph suggested that it might be quite nice to incorporate it within the looks. It's all about like a pinched red lip. Lots of like graphic lines, um, which felt very Charles, but we kind of wanted to elevate it more into like a beauty look this season. Um, so that's where we've gone. And if there was kind of three or five words to describe being backstage at Charles' show, what would you say? Fucking hectic, crazy circus. <laughs> oh, I think it was one of the most incredible moments in this fashion week. I mean, um, as soon as the lights went down, you know, the whole shows uh, started and you know you start seeing like the first models coming out i mean apart from the clothes is actually everything coming together is the music the makeup the, the the candles on the hair you know like that was absolutely breathtaking uh everything is so much on point and while i was looking at it i was thinking that there is no one in london that can express the youth culture you know the club scene the cool kids as good as charles jeffrey does and he's one of a kind oh, i thought it was gorgeous i was to be fair i was really excited about tonight just because i love charles's use of color and it was beautiful there was one moment in particular with the candles on the models heads and it was burning and it was just a whole moment so really great show i uh, love the live immersive experience it's just sort of an extension of charles's shows which are always around entertainment and uh, incredibly emotive and this i think beyond anything uh, really felt that we were in the heart of london it's incredible it existed on so many planes like that you had the sort of stuff that's really familiar but then the Charles Jeffrey, the stuff that comes out of his mind, so crazy. I, like probably the best show I've ever seen. I really like that idea of sort of sharing the platform and having some form of sort of connective thread as well. It's really cool. And this collaboration after the whole event, how, how do you feel? How... I think we're both tired. Tired. <laughs> yeah, definitely tired. Um, but I feel so proud of Bradley. You know, like this is the first opportunity for him to do like a a live runway show and you know it's been uh, a hard like last couple of days for you but you fucking yeah. pulled off like an amazing like comment on couture and volume and I'm so proud of you and I'm so proud of my team as well for like pulling together a really strong show again like I think this is just a reflection of how you know this industry needs to be it needs to support new talent um, and Charles is a great example of, of that. Um, it started off looking at how women were sort of represented in 18th century satire um, and then it just became me in my studio just like draping volumes and trying to figure out something that hasn't been done before um, and something that just felt really natural to me so I was just yeah it was it was it was a lot instinctive instinctive yeah. it was gorgeous and is there any piece that you feel was like oh my god that was a bitch to make i'm not doing that again uh definitely the cage dress <laughs> <laughs> i'm never doing a cage dress again <laughs> worth it though look gorgeous so good yeah i'm really happy about that well from my side i think you know we're in a position where we we know what works with us we know what our codes are now we've been doing it for six years and like, you know, being in a really interesting position with tomorrow and like, you know, mapping out the next couple of years, well, more than a couple of years, the next kind of like decade almost with them. It's like really interesting for us to kind of reflect on, you know, what the customer wants and, and what works for us as a business. So I think we, we started with that, but then obviously like just being in a creative studio with lots of creative voices, we just sort of took those elements 
and just push them into a whole new dimension. And we know how to do what we do really well and I think that coming back to doing a live show was a really great opportunity for us just to flex our muscle and also to just do it within a club space with my best friend. You know, like it's it just is exactly what it says in a tin basically. Fashion needs to be more than just models walking down a runway. It needs to say something, it needs to mean something and you know it needs to make people feel excited like there's something so human and primal about people gathering together to watch something beautiful it's a very ancient thing and i think that that's why clubbing and fashion always go really nicely together because it's human it's a human it's a human output